Hey, I'm Joe DiGiulio, back with another quick lesson. Today we're going to be working with Creative Mark's HP Gesso, the high-performance gesso that I use in, when I, in almost all of my painting. To start with, what I do with it is make sure you mix it up. Sometimes separation can occur with all gessos, so a good stir always gets it back coagulated together, if you will. Just apply a little bit to a canvas. Now, most canvases are already double primed, but what I do is I like to use the gesso to create textural effects. And that has actually saves me a little bit of money by doing that. Later, I can go back and paint veneer painting over the top of it. Instead of using a whole bulk of, bulk of paint body on there, I could just use the more inexpensive gesso to get the same effect. Mural brushes or any kind of white bristle brush is excellent for putting it down. Uh, you know, there is a technique if you have a coarse canvas and you're painting portraiture, you might want to use a couple of coats of this and then sand in between. And what that's going to do is fill in all the little valleys inside your canvas. A nice smooth canvas gives great effects when you're going ahead and painting in portraiture. But in this case today, I do a little abstraction, so I actually use it to create textual effects. First, I'll have the brush down. I like to record the brush stroke. There's enough body in the gesso that I can record these brush strokes with it, but also it's thin enough that it flows evenly over the canvas. That's a great property that I like about this gesso. I've got it down. Now the next thing that I do, and one of my techniques, let me set this off to the side, is I take one of my Creative Mark palette knives and I like to scrape away. Actually being a sculptor when I was in school many, many years ago, I like to bring a 3D effect into a 2D object like my paintings. So I'll take a little bit, scrape it off, and then I just flick it right down. And then as the gesso is kind of drying, I'll go back and I'll create light textural effects. I'm going to kind of tilt this so that the camera can see, but I try to get these little textural effects in there besides just the stroke of the brush. I'm going to come back in and just lightly go over the top. Where I want some more peaks and valleys, I'll just add a little bit more on. Now you don't want to apply it too thick or it'll cause cracking. So you want to have some thin layers, but you want to also, you can have some kind of ridges to it, but just don't go overboard with, the one, with one coat. If you want to do more, add another layer to it, but let it kind of partially dry, work it back. And because it's so malleable, this gesso, it flows so evenly it allows me to go in, and if I didn't like the valleys I had, I'll just go and block it all out. Now I might have a too thick of a layer. If I do, I just scrape it off with a palette knife. Just a nice, simple application there. See, this is going to record little valleys and techniques. Then I can come back and do acrylic washes. When I have acrylic washes, the pigment's going to fall into the valleys, whereas the tops, the peaks of the valleys, the paint won't be there. So it creates some kind of textural and glow effects. Again, just taking and flicking it right on. I have some brush stroke. I have some palette knife stroke. I have some flicks and throws. It creates all these different textures. And it's very simple to do and quite inexpensive. So I suggest when you're working with preparing your canvas before you paint, next time, try a little bit of the Jerry's HP Gesso. I'm Joe DiGiulio. Thanks for stopping in.